Welcome to my simple tutorial for painting a cherry blossom branch and I'm going to show you step by step how I do this. First I wanted to show you my practice page so don't be surprised if as you get started your sheet looks a little bit like this which is close to the cherry blossom look but it could also be cotton candy or a pink cloud. We're just practicing today and I wanted to make sure to say that up front. We're just seeing what happens with the watercolor on the paper and it's all about practice. So nothing starts off as perfectly as you want it to. Don't be afraid to try new things. The three colors I'm using are a quinacridone rose. You can use any pink you have. I'm using a spring green color and also a light brown for the branch. And the paper is also very important. This is my 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. You can find this in most stores like Target or Walmart. And I use the Canson brand, but really any brand will work. So to start off, I'm making sure my brush is nice and wet. I'm using a number six brush, and this is a synthetic Princeton Heritage brand. So I have this rose pink that I brought into my clean palette. I really just want to get this nice and watery so it's a thin color when I put it on the paper. thing that will help us achieve the look of a cherry blossom branch is also to work with sort of these cluster shapes. Just as they look on the tree, they're kind of bunched together at different parts of the branch randomly. And then I almost forgot to tape down my paper. I'm doing this mostly so I don't touch my page if it moves across um, while I'm working. I also want to keep it centered on the video frame here. If I was worried about white edges um, and keeping a clean line where the where the color ends on the paper, I would use masking tape, but I'm not worried about the, that today because I'm just doing these little spot illustrations, so I'm not worried about keeping a clean white border around the edges, so I'm just gonna use this really gentle washi tape. So getting started, we're just gonna um, get the brush really wet with the color and just start dabbing in petal shapes. While this is absolutely meant to be a loose, stress-free process, you do want to keep in mind the drying time for your watercolor leaves. We want to add a darker dab of color in the center of the flower area for shading and that kind of looks more like a cherry blossom. But you also don't want to add it too soon, so I would wait about 15 to 20 seconds while the petals start to dry before you dab in darker color in the center and that way it will bleed a little bit out but it won't bleed all over the color that you've already put down and you can see sometimes it it works and sometimes it doesn't you can always go back and dab more color in for that one I just did I waited too long and it was a little dry already so what you can do is just grab some um, water and and get get that wet again and then blend it into the petal a little bit more
done with the petals, I can add the branches. Now normally I kind of, on purpose, uh, mix my colors together and touch the colors to different colors and blend them all together, but in the case of this beautiful pink color, I actually don't want to touch the pink and the brown together. I don't want to, it's not dry yet, so I don't want to have any of the colors bleeding together. So I'm just going in between the white space and adding little brown branches here and there. step is to add green leaves to the blossoms and the buds and you can see I'm adding some green leaves to frame the smaller circle shapes which I like to think of as the little buds before they become the full blossom and then you can also fill in green in some of the white spaces just to add a little more splash of color and I just think the green and the pink go so nicely together 